so glad to be here today with Seth Mulder and Midnight Run. And here today, hey y'all, an old whiskey. All right, introduce yourself. Let us know you're doing. Uh, my name is Colton Powers. I'm from Kingsport, Tennessee, and I play the Five Spring Fang Book for the South. Kingsport, Tennessee. Seth Mulder. i uh, from originally from the state of North Dakota, and I play guitar and mandolin. I'm Chevy Watson, and uh, from North Carolina, and I play guitar, sing. So, how did y'all know? I, I guess I started blowing with the start. How did you know you wanted to start doing bluegrass? You were young. When did you start? You know, for me, I, I got really interested in bluegrass um, from my grandparents. They listen to a lot of country music and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I uh, kind of, through them, discovered old school country and then eventually discovered a, 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 I, I was taking violin lessons and my violin teacher gifted me a flat and scrub live party guitar record. Oh my uh, and that's kind of what took off from there and just kind of really got into bluegrass music and became really passionate about it. So violin to what? Violin to fiddle uh, okay. to uh, mandolin. mandolin. I learned mandolin guitar right around St. Don. When was that? Oh shoot! I was probably 14, so 13 or 14. I've been I took violin lessons since I was six, um, but it wasn't. I didn't try to play like bluegrass style until I was probably 12 or so. When did you start doing on stage? Oh, uh, start playing on stage. I started playing when I was about 14 on stage. Me and my grandpa would go around and nurse smoke. Oh, that's the last one. Yeah. What did your grandpa play? Uh, he played uh, upright bass. Upright bass. Yeah, that's a great deal. Yeah. What about you, Colton? Where did you start? Uh, I started playing about 11 years ago. Uh, my dad, <coughs> he kind of surprised me with a, a banjo for just no reason. We was a uh, middle of renovating the house, you know, and. Uh, that's it. Won't you stop on by? I got you a surprise. I thought he painted my room, but he got me a. Well, he did, but uh, he got me a five string banjo too. How about that? It, it kind of started after a, a gag gift from my granddad. He got me one of those canjos. You ever seen them? No, canjo. Yeah, it's like a stick with dulcimer yeah, 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 frets. Yeah. It's got a spam can on the end of it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I'm not seeing the person, but uh, yeah. So uh, my granddad got me one of them. And, I started kind of recalling some old tunes Dad used to play before he got shipped off to Iraq, you know, uh, before, uh, you know, like a long time ago before that. And uh, Dad, uh, I think that maybe that would have pushed Dad to making that decision. And, uh, what made you like the banjo? Well, uh, I didn't know how it was supposed to sound at first, and uh, I kind of looked it up on YouTube, and I uh, seen a fellow named Earl Scruggs. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, you know, pretty, pretty timeless tale there. I'm pretty sure everybody got that same story, but... Uh, I got I become enamored with that sound. I've been chasing it ever since. Well, so no lessons. I did take lessons for a little while. I went to a, a, a fellow named Tommy Freeman over in Virginia. Yeah, and he kind of showed me uh, my fundamentals of my playing, and then I went to East Tennessee State University. Yeah, okay. I went there for a few years. Have a music degree? Yeah, I got a bachelor of arts. Yeah, yeah. I got the yeah got the degree and whatnot. Yeah, that's pretty good. When did you start on stage? Uh, here. I started about seven years ago. Okay. Then, uh, but uh, I started probably about before eight, nine, something like that. Before that, but, uh, with a with a family band of okay. my, my dad. Yeah. Two dads. Yeah. A lot of family history. What about you? When did you get started bluegrass? Uh, about five or six, man. My dad, he kind of got me on the guitar when I was real young. When you were five or six years old. Yeah, oh, I grew up listening goodness. to him. He plays banjo, guitar, mandolin, sings all kinds of parts. So, so I just kind of grew up with now. That's kind of how it started for me. When did you start on stage? Yeah, I think probably about six or seven. We left uh, messing around with it at home. For Everybody I've talked to in Bluegrass the same their parents or grandparents, and they start yeah. really young. That's how it is with bluegrass. It's more or less taught by your parents or under a tree or something yeah, like yeah. that. It ain't like you're growing up in a classroom and you're like yeah. your dad or something like that. How often do you all get people who are locals and that's what they grew up on, like in the mountains or something? I, have a lot, I know this is a touristy kind of place, but y'all tour the places. How often do you have grandma and grandpa's come and say, man, when I was a kid in the 30s or whatever, do you have that? Oh, yeah, all the time. Do you really? Yeah, all the time. How do they, what do they say about your plant? Does it remind them of a being a child or something like that? No, absolutely. Like, you know, a lot of times it's a particular song they maybe heard growing up. They heard this song, and they'll just come up and request it. And it, I, it's not even just locals, it's just people in general to come here on vacation. Then uh, I would say that more than so than the locals, but just people coming on vacation, they're like, oh man, I used to get, they'll see the instruments of the golf, you'll play bluegrass, and they'll have, you know, so and so grew up, my grandpa used to play this song, that song, somebody would have to do that. Something bluegrass reminds me of a while I was in a quartet and 
we did some, some barber shop. Yeah. And it's a smaller world, you might say, a barber shop. It's like the spectacle, y'all have your own version of that. Uh, society professionals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've noticed that more about bluegrass, too, a smaller world. Who knows who? And go for one band and the next, and that kind for of sure. Kind for of, sure. Yeah, same thing. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm guessing that works on an overall positive uh, approach, right? We can get to know each other and so forth. Oh, absolutely, yeah. How often do y'all on the road these days? You get it? Oh, I did. Yeah, Especially quite a bit. Summer. Yeah, yeah, summer. Yeah, summer. Yeah, one bit. And y'all were in Europe earlier. We're so, going, yeah, and we'll be going back here in July. Going back in July? Yep. So over there you have a good audience? Great audience, yeah. yeah. They love it more than, you know, there's more passion for it some places over there than it is with the States. Wow. Just for, just because they're, you know, enamored with like the culture of the States and just like that, that history of music, yeah. That's really cool. And the top. Yeah. What do y'all see yourself the next several years? You're going to kind of make this a key thing. You're home here at Old uh, Smoky. Keep doing touring on the side or what? How do you, you on know, this on the side? And I see just trying to, trying to balance it out. Eventually, I'd like to transition into doing more just on the road stuff and be able to play here when we want to. Yeah. Um, you know, right now, this is our day job. We'll do this full time. But transition into that and be play play on the road more and just uh, you know do uh, you know keep keep build that audience keep growing it bigger better shows. And what do your families think about this? I mean, last time we talked, you were dating someone. I can't remember now. Soul was more of a newlywed or adopted. Me. What about, are you married? Not married? I'm married. Yeah, you know, how long? Uh, 2018. Though. 18. Okay, so not too long though. Very pretty. Was she supportive of all the bluegrass? Yeah. Obviously, you know she was getting into. I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Any kids? Uh, no. No. Does she ever come watch you here play? Yes, when she gets a chance. Yeah. She travels with me when she's able. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. I'd be able to with you. What about you? Uh, yeah, I'm married. I've got two kids. Yeah. Um, I got a five-year-old, a two-year-old. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good one. They go on the road with you too? Uh, no, no. I mean, if we're able, if we're able to, they'll come out and see some shows every now and then. Yeah. Uh, but you know, being it makes it more challenging being on the road and stuff like that. Yeah. And the little ones too. Yeah. What about you? Not married, but I do have a good one at the house. She's really supportive about it. Okay. The only kid I got is a black lab at the black house. Lab. That's the only child I have. They're respectful kid. Yeah. <laughs> That's more of my speed. Yeah, <laughs> How long have you been dating? About four years. Four years, man. Congratulations. Yeah. That's great. It's not a good four years. Uh, any, who are some people now that, in my, I'm sure it's okay if they're standard answer, who are some people that really influenced your sound? I know you mentioned Earl, but. You see the main guys in Earl Scruggs, maybe? Yeah, there was a lot of Earl, Earl Scruggs, Jim Mills, and J.D. Crow, kind of okay. an and a Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson? Good stuff. Did this day they saw an influence you now? Yep. Come on, yeah. Good. What about you, Sam? I would say, uh, as far as um, vocally, like the Johnson Mountain Boys, the Dudley Canal, Del McCurry, um, and then mandolin wise would be like Ronnie McCurry, uh, Chris Dealey. Uh, you know, I have a very wide variety of music that I've listened to that inspired me, but I would say those would be the probably the biggest musical influences. Like I would say, like the Del McCurry band, the Johnson Mountain Boys, um, kind of like Sky, um, Alice, and then maybe like J.D. Crow, the New South, something like that. Good. What about you? you think anybody stands out? Good influence on you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm with Seth on Chris Dealey. I mean, yeah. he was a big influence on me as far as my handling goes. Guitar-wise, I love Tony Rice. I love a lot of metal. I like jazz. I like people like Victor Wood. What about your modern songs? That, like, I've you always know, to you hang out with people like Balsam Range or any kind of a Vincent. You might have you kind of know or hang out with yeah. other or get to do this music with them. The Grass Schools. The Grass Schools, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we hung out with East Nash Grass, nope. Colorado Sun, uh, the, yeah, Dudley Canal, uh, hung out some with uh, Never Come Down Band, they're from out west. You know, there's a variety of bands, you know, the thing is playing on the road, you get, you become friends with all these people. With essentially whoever you're touring with, like a lot of, a lot of times there'll be a festival that we play, and it happens more often than not, like we're, you know, we're playing the same day here in the last little bit, it's like we play the same day as the grass. Yeah, and so you get, to, you get to know them guys, you get to hang out with them a little bit. That's kind of how that happens, yeah. What do y'all hope, um, as you wrap up, what do you hope in years ago, they look back on your group or your playing? What do you hope people remember? Oh, what about you? Well, I just I just hope I had a good time watching, you know, watching the show and listening to you. So, you know, just a good time listening to you. Yeah. But you so. I guess I hope that music can... Uh, the, the whole thing in a whole can be just as inspiring to the next generation as the previous generation was inspiring to me. You know, growing up, like getting to hear the Johnson Mountain Boys or Del McCurry, you know, those are big influences on me. 
And it really comes down to, it's not just about the music, but it's about who they were as people, you know. Yeah. I've met Dell multiple times, and he's always been the nicest to be. And the same with Dudley uh, from the Johnson Mountain Boys. And I think a lot of your legacy comes down to not only your music, but just who you are as a person and how you are around the people that, uh, that come out and listen to your music in the, the next generation. I hope that I can be as inspiring and have that much impact on at least someone out there than they had on me. I'm sure you all are. Do you think about how many proverbial seeds you're planting as people just hear this random stuff? Yeah. For them, random. Because like, I like to see the face that walk by and kind of go like, you know, all of a sudden, like, I didn't expect this to be here. Yeah, yeah. What about you? You look back on your career. What do you think hope people remember? I just hope that the people I've been associated with over the years enjoys being around me as a person enough to be able to play music with me in the future, whether it be on the road or not. I've never really tried to make a name for myself. Yeah, yeah, just kind of. I just live in the moment when we're on stage, and I just enjoy. I live for that. Good. I like your your good with percussion with your head. <laughs> You're good percussion. <laughs> you blame Corey Taylor for that one. Is that what it is? Right. <laughs> it's fun to watch because, yeah, you feel it. Too. It's really good. Like, uh, well, thank you for taking the time. This is fantastic. And uh, you got to watch them, check them out, and we'll put all the links below where you can follow them on social media, YouTube channel, and so forth. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it.